Actually, uh, uh, Dyson, now that I have you on, like, what do you think about Sonic Mania and all that? I love Sonic Mania, and the main reason I love it more than anything is because after all these years, Sonic's getting like a remaster of its original type of game, and bonk, right. is it? That just <laughs> Fuck <shows> you! you. <laughs> it was one of those mom purchases where, like, instead of the Super Nintendo, she bought the fucking Turbo oh, Graphics, right? Like a classic so mom sad. mistake. <laughs> Hey man, like, like if if she didn't, we wouldn't be having this conversation right exactly. now. Exactly. So, yeah. so and I wouldn't ha- have had the beautiful childhood that I had. That's quite a sad childhood. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys, and welcome to episode 23 of Podcast Reload. It's the general gaming podcast by Sifted.net subscribers, where we invite community guests onto the show to talk about the games industry in all its weird ways. I am your host, Vin Hill, and joining me, as always, is my co-host and fellow Japan dweller, Evan Piotrowski. Welcome to the Thunderdome. (laughs) And joining us as well is, of course, our community guest, and this week we have a returning guest, Dyson XP, also just known as Dyson. Hello. Hello, and... Uh, we got any housekeeping? I don't think we have. Have we got any fuck ups? Did you say anything wrong last week? I'm sure there's Evan? plenty of fuck ups, but no one, no one's <laughs> cared to correct any of it. So I guess we can move Bowling on. Falling through. Yeah, yeah. We've actually got a new question, a new game. We've got a series of questions for you, Dyson. So are you ready? I'm ready. Basically, we're gonna play a game called uh, Save or Kill. So I'm gonna basically give you two game titles or something to do with the games industry, and you have to choose which you would save out the two but if you do save one then you have to also know that the other one will be killed off forever and you'll never see it again sort of thing so hey. choose wisely so you ready yep okay number one mario or sonic sonic half-life <laughs> or diablo half-life uh world of warcraft or league of legends league of legends really league of legends yeah. okay. these are the ones i'm saving right <laughs> or do they just kill off all the things that i like <laughs> you just killed off what? No, I'm joking. Yeah, you can't go back. Right ones. You can't go back. <laughs> the dead. Uh, Miyamoto or Todd Howard? Uh, Miyamoto. Ooh. Uh, okay, last one. Last one. Okay. Quake or Unreal Tournament? That's a tough one, man. I need an answer. It's an easy one for me. Quake, I think. Hmm. So that's it. Unreal Tournament's dead forever. Thank you, Dyson. Wow. Yep. Mario. Mario's gone forever. <laughs> yep. Fuck the plumber, man. <laughs> Fuck Blue the hedgehogs. plumber. <laughs> Fuck the plumber. I don't know if I've ever heard that. <laughs> that should have been, that should have been the, uh, you know, during the, eight, the 16-bit wars. That should have been, you know, it was pretty <laughs> clever, like, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. But I think the better slogan <laughs> is Genesis. Fuck the plumber. Fuck the plumber. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, coming off a uh, pawn innuendos. Um, yeah, it's interesting that you chose uh, Miyamoto over Todd Howard, but then you killed off Mario. Yeah. It's interesting. It's yeah, weird. Fair enough. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it, it's, I like that game because it's like gut reaction sort of thing. It's not like you have no time to think. So you're just like, oh, uh, yeah, I'll save that one. And then you think about it afterwards like, oh, shit, Todd Howard's dead. That means no more Elder Scrolls. Mm. Yeah, see, I never really played the Elder School games, so... You're a sick man. Well, you are a sick I don't know, man. Vin, neither have I, so... You are also a sick man. <laughs> you both lost all my respect. Uh, I, if anyone's listening and they want to be a new co-host on this podcast, then just uh, message me and I'll kick off Evan as quick as possible because I don't like dirty uh, non-Elder Scrolls players, basically. Dirty, so. Dirty peasants? Who don't hey, peasants. There you go. Okay. See? Me, right. me and Vin you, would just, me and Vin, me and Evan would just start our own podcast now. You do that. It'll be it'll be retro games for weeks. Podcast re re <laughs> Sonic versus Bug. All the oh. time. It'll be called no, it'll be called uh podcast uh re retro. That's what it'll be called. Podcast peasants. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's go with that. All right, uh moving on. Thanks for that man. It's uh it's nice. cool. I I think we're definitely gonna carry on doing that actually. It's pretty fun. I do like that. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, moving on to what we've been playing this week. So we'll kick off with you, Evan. What have you been playing this week, man? All right. Uh, lead up to this, um, I've kind of had Nintendo on the mind just because of uh, the old 
The, oh really? The, the, Why? The old yeah. Nothing's yeah. happened. Yeah, well, nothing happened. What's what's going on? The old Switch announcement and uh, right. I was in a comment section on whatever the thousand curated Switch things on on Sifted and <laughs> right. I was talking about. <clears throat> I must have been talking about um, the Joy Cons and how I would never like take them off the actual the system itself and, and play. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would rather have the Pro Controller, and I, I think I said something about that's one reason why I never got uh, through Galaxy. And I think uh, Curious Conjurer, oh, okay. who is a, a Sifted member, kind of lamented the fact, like, oh, man, like you, you should really play those games. I'm s- kind of sorry that you don't like motion controls. And then I thought, well, I have two solid weeks before I get the PlayStation 4 Pro. Like, maybe I should give Galaxy Mar- Super Mario Galaxy another shot. And mm-hmm. I'm so stupid. I, I never knew you could actually um, play Wii games on the Wii U. I didn't know that. I knew that there was... Oh, a, really? I knew that you could... Um, the Wii U console was emulated on the Wii U, but I didn't know you could use physical discs to play the to play on the right. Wii U. Well, I think they did the same thing with the Wii U, actually. Like, you could play uh, GameCube games on it, so it's always been... Jeez, I didn't even know that. Ball, like, guess. that's all news yeah. to me. So... I wouldn't... I wouldn't like... Uh, do you know if like GameCube games work in the Wii U? I do That'd not know that. Uh, it probably doesn't. But yeah, anyway, go on. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I was like, wait a minute. I checked it. Yep, you can you can play physical Wii U discs on the Wii U. So uh, pulled my um, Wii out, plugged it in to eject Mario Galaxy, which was still in the system. And uh, <laughs> so I've been playing uh, been playing Super Mario Galaxy. Um, so just I don't know. To make a long story short, like. It's a really good game, but it's fun. But um, right. I just I have such an issue with the motion controls, like the analog stick. Uh, it's just a piece of plastic. Like I don't even know if there's anything anything in there. Like it, it's it, it's <laughs> it's lighter than a fucking feather. And one re- one problem I have with it is there's no real push or pull on the analog stick, so it feels insanely cheap. And right, so no resistance no to it res- Exactly, yeah. No resistance. Right. So, like, okay. when I'm moving Mario, he seems more finicky than he should be because there's no resistance. So I don't feel like I have a lot of control. And that led to so many, like, misjudged jumps or, like, accidentally falling off a ledge. So I died multiple times from that. And then, mm-hmm. um, like, I played for about three hours today. Like, my hands still hurt just from having such, yeah, a, like, a non-conventional uh, control scheme. But is it still fun? Are you enjoying it? It's like, fun. Will, it's will fun. you see it through till the end? I think that's the real question. Yeah, I'll see it through to the end. Um, I have some issues with the camera control because of like uh, there's depth because of uh, you know how they have um, how do you want to say like uh, these these masses these like planet masses with their own gravitational pull. Yeah. Uh, because of like the spherical aspect of that, the camera gets a bit finicky, and the control the controls can get inverted, and stuff like that. Yeah. And so, on top of that, there's some depth perception problems where, just you think you're closer or further away from something than you are, and then you end up getting hit by an enemy or falling off a ledge. Uh, but other than that, like I do like the idea, um, of just. Well, it kind of lends itself to a lot of Mario games where the levels are varied and you have a hub world like Super Mario 64. So it's a ship instead of a castle, and then instead of paintings you're jumping into, you're hopping around different galaxies. So then under that framework, you can go anywhere. There's an ice planet, a fire planet, a sand planet, a a toy chest planet, a candy planet, which is similar to lots of the other Mario games where it's not the real world, and because the the mushroom kingdom or whatever like we don't even know where that place exists so anything is possible it's not grounded in reality so anywhere you go could be the big world or whatever so there's a lot of different kinds of worlds and uh there's a lot of variety and it, it is fun it is fun i just i just wish i could play with a pro controller i think seriously like the difference between playing with the motion control and the nunchuck and a pro controller if you wanted to do like a, z- a one to ten scale in terms of a review to me is like two or three points like that's how much problem i have with playing this with with the rear we remote and nunchuck like it's just i, I yeah. fucking hate it but the g- <laughs> it and it sucks because the game is really really fun 
Um, yeah, I mean, aside that, from that. that's that's the main problem with a lot of sort of Nintendo Wii games. Like, while they might be fantastic games, like I'm just not a fan of like the the whole nunchuck stuff. Right. So. And and uh, to to finish this up, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see it through to the end. And uh, the thing is, now that I've gone through the whole thing of uh, getting my Wii remote or my Wii mote and my nunchuck ready, I think I'm going to. Uh, Buy Skyward Sword and uh, go through that. <gasps> it's isn't that coming out for the Wii U? Or it, it, or, it's, it it's already you can buy it on the on the Wii U eShop for the Wii Virtual Console. Ah, uh, okay. Right. So uh, yeah, I actually might pull the trigger on that because if I don't play it now, you'll never play. I'll it. never play it. So yeah, no, it makes sense. I might well uh, until the Switch remaster comes out. Until, let's be honest. Yeah, I know. But then you know you have motion controls to deal with, but. <laughs> I I might do it. It depends on how quickly I get through uh, Super Mario Galaxy, but whatever. It, it's either that or Super Mario Galaxy Two to get through. But I'm having Sweet. yeah, I'm I'm having a good time with it. Uh, you know, motion controls aside. So yeah, it's 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 a great game that just I wish had a different that di- didn't rely on any control gimmick. Right. Cool. So how about you, Dyson? What have you been playing this week, man? I've been playing uh. Da, 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 da. Speaking of that, I remember like back in the day, my um, good friend of mine that I used to play online with, um, he used to send me voice commands like on a, on Xbox 360 or whatever. And whenever we were playing Battlefield, like he'd never just say, "Hey man, I'm ready. I'm in a game. Like come on, play." It always just like this silence for a moment, like on the little the mm. little audio file. Like, what what is that? It's from Battlefield. Oh basically. really? I thought I thought yeah, it's like they've had the theme song forever, sort of thing. So everyone knows it. Like if you're a Battlefield oh, okay. fan, I'm so confused. Just... I thought he was doing that, ba da ba ba da ba, which is like slightly <laughs> like Mario. Yeah, yeah. Slightly better. I was like, oh, yeah. you're playing you're it, playing it is, Mario Galaxy kind of like as well. That. Awesome. Let's talk about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> no man. No, no, okay. We, right. we are we are currently in 2016. So. Well, I'm not. Cool. So how you find it, man? You liking Battlefield One? Uh, no. <laughs> Oh really? I don't know, I don't know You're if not I like liking it. Battlefield games, like I use Call of Duty as an example. Like the biggest killjoy in that game is when someone spawns behind you, and okay. they just kill you, and you're like, "God damn it!" And then Battlefield One, it's like that's the game all the time. It's like you don't get rewarded. What game? For like, what game mode are you playing? Uh, Conquest. Oh really? I just well, feel like it's always against you. Like if I'm killing a guy and I kill. His like teammate, but like they're spawning faster than I can kill them, and I just you always get like overrun. I don't know if I like that yeah. like squad spawning mechanic. It depends. I mean, like the way I've been playing it is, uh, it's, yeah, it's weird. I mean, if you play in a team, it's a totally different game to what it is you when see, you play single I do, player. I do it. I have to spawn in a squad, do my own thing, right. and then I'm trying to kill. So you're playing by yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a completely different game. Um, I've met like a lot of Call of Duty players that have come over to Battlefield One and hated it, absolutely hated it. Like, oh, what do you mean? Well, like, I have to be in a team to do well? It's like, well, yeah, kind of, because it's a team-based game mode. But and they, but like once I tell them that, they're like, oh, okay, they start looking at it as like a team, team-based yeah. game. And it's like I I've recently played the uh, Call of Duty uh, Infinite Warfare beta, and that is just like zero percent teamwork in that game. Like, ab- like you could not. You'd have to go through a comb to even understand like what teamwork means in that game. It's just no teamwork whatsoever, and that it's just completely what you do and how you react and how you treat a situation. But in Battlefield, like if you haven't got a solid squad, you're gonna have a bad time, basically. Hey, so, so on on the whole, are the uh, the map sizes smaller in Infinite Warfare than in Battlefield One? A lot oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh uh, yeah! Obviously, uh, yeah. this is coming from someone who knows nothing of of either right. game. So you don't play it. Yeah, like in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, the Christ, they could be. You could probably fit Call of Duty map like fifty times. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's <sighs> that's always map. been the battlefield thing, right? It's like planes, trains, and automobiles, right? Like it's not just a bunch of guys hopping around. You got aerial mm-hmm. stuff going on and and tanks and that. Yeah. Yeah. Saying that, Dyson, have you played the uh, operations mode? In I have. Battlefield, yep. That's so crazy. I just, <laughs> just guys everywhere, man. Yeah, and it's pretty. It's pretty wild. I kind of, I kind of enjoying that one more because, you know, you're not really trying to 
kill a group of people per se like there's just that right. many people you don't have in your head i need to kill them all you know you just like hold these objectives as mu- for as long as you can like do the most you can in a life so yeah. i've been enjoying that one a I, bit more i think that's the point now like that is the difference between call of duty and battlefield completely i mean in call of duty i am constantly looking at my kd spread constantly like oh man like my kd is down or my kd is up i'm doing well in battlefield it's to, it, like you don't think about it. it's either a win or a loss like if you win a match that's all that matters it, like that and that's how they sort of award yeah. like award you as well like if you go and look at your stats or whatever they tell you how many wins you've got not your kd spread so it's a different like i've been at the top of the leaderboard with like one kill and 15 deaths Right, you know, like just yeah, like exactly. reviving everyone I can possibly, and that, you know that bit's fun. But it's just mm-hmm. the whole like, oh, there's two people in that building. I'm gonna go in and kill them, and you kill the first guy, and then the, the, the second guy sees you, and then but they keep spawning. It's like there's like another guy upstairs, <laughs> and then somehow you manage to kill right. him, and then there's another guy, and then you die. And if in COD, my you know my brain's like, I need to outsmart these next four people. I and mean, if I kill right. them all, you feel like, yeah. But in Battlefield, different. it's just it's very different. so yeah. impossible. Like, oh, two people have just gone around that wall. I'm going to go around there and kill them. Oh, now there's four of them. And it's just yep. crazy. No, I've been playing the exact same thing. Uh, probably not, because I'm not fresh out of Call of Duty. I haven't played Call of Duty in about three years. I'm a complete Battlefield converter now. Like, I've, I've just yeah. been playing Battlefield for the last three years. Um, yeah, I'm really loving it. I mean, if you if you get a full squad, it's it's a different game. That's all I will say. Like, if I'm playing by myself and I have to join some random squad with, like, random-ass people in it that just don't heal or they're not doing stuff properly or they'll just ignore the objectives and just sit on a hillside That's and snipe people. The other reason I'm not It's a different it. game. It's like... Yeah, it's People don't seem to know how to play it. Like, I'm always in a squad yeah. and they're never pressing Q for, like, mark an objective that we can go do. They don't do it. Mm-hmm. It's just... I, they ignore you. It makes it more frustrating when you're on your own. It's, I mean, is that is that just an anecdotal thing, or is that something that's very common? It's common. Is it? Um, is it? And that's that's the thing. I mean, if you, the thing that I would suggest actually, Dyson, is getting on to like sifted or something and just putting out a forum post and say, "Hey, who's on Battlefield One on the PC? Let's join. Let's make a squad and let's play this fucking game properly." Like, you will have an amazing time with a full squad. Like, it's just a completely different game. I can't I can't emphasize that enough, so I, I mean, will say try that out before you... I've been you... in a squad once, and that was fun, but it's just trying to get everyone on at the same time. Yeah. And I wish Shift, no, I know Shift it had, like, the numbers, because, like, the time you've divided it up for the three formats, and, like, mm-hmm. the three platforms, is like, man, is anyone playing Battlefield on PC? And you, maybe, you right. might get, like, two, maybe three... Then by the time yeah. you narrow it down to day that you can play, you've only got two or like the time zones. Yeah, that it's is just... the big issue, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, I would say that like if you can, if you can even get like a couple of people because it makes all the difference. Like you don't have to have a full squad, just even one other person Yeah. is, it makes happens. all the difference in the world, man. So yeah. Cool. So uh, yeah, we should probably move on anyway. We should move on into our main topics and our main topic this week with uh, Dice and XP. Do you want to kick us off, man? Uh, what you want to talk about this week? Should we? Yeah, yeah, I could, I could do that. Yeah, uh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> my question or topic is what have been your biggest surprises of 2016 so far? But the idea mm. is these surprises aren't able to, aren't intended as surprises. So they just came along and they were surprising to you, sort of thing. So, uh, okay. I actually can't remember anything more than a month ago, so I'm just going to use some recent <laughs> things that have happened <laughs> right. as surprises. Sure. Recent is best. Um, first one was probably Gears 4 for the PC. Uh, the port for the PC was flawless, like, nothing wrong with it. And mm-hmm. I, I was just in that this mindset of, it's a PC game, it's ported over, it's going to suck, the frame rate's going to be poor, and the graphics options are going to be useless. But it was the complete opposite. It was, like, completely utilised. No performance issues, no, like, delay or lag, just a flawless Again. game. And the thing is, I bought the Ultimate Edition, which let you play a week early. So it's even in that condition before the game was even actually properly out. So, you know, I was so used to, like, day one patches or, like, 
I always get PC games. I'm like, man, I have to wait like a week just for like the PC patch <laughs> for it to actually work properly or get the frame cap off. But with this game, it was just... Straight out of the gate, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, from a Microsoft... You know, under Microsoft as well, which I wasn't really thinking they'd do a good job. And it was from right. the Microsoft Store, so it's like, yeah, there's no way this is going to work properly first time. But it did. So I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, you've got to give that. them credit. You've got to give credit where it's due. I mean, them, them boys are trying to compete with, like, Steam and stuff, you know? And the fact that they're... Yeah, they had a bit of a rough start, and a lot of people complained about their store, but so did Steam. I mean, Steam was awful when it first launched, man. It, God, it was just... That was a bag of hot mess, but it's it's cool to see that Microsoft are actually catching up on the on the Windows Store now. Mm. So sweet. Um, I was going to say something else about it. Yeah, like the fact that it wasn't delayed either. Like usually we're delaying the PC version to you know make it run on the PC, and it, it was it came right. out in the exact same time. So that was as a PC game, and that's like you really appreciate when you just can just buy a game and it just works. You don't have to wait mm-hmm. six months. You don't have to wait for patches. It just works. It utilizes. There's nothing worse than buying like a really expensive graphics card and the game's capped at like 30 FPS and you just pay for stream. So yeah, that was one of my biggest surprises of the month. Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> and, uh, the second surprise was probably the Titanfall 2 DLC being all free. It's free. I yeah. didn't even know this. Any upcoming DLC is all free, so anyone who's bought the standalone game gets all the DLC for free, which I I thought would have been quite a big deal or celebrated, but there was just a few articles on Sifted saying, yeah, it's free. Yeah, I didn't know about it, so yeah. Yeah, I didn't hear about that. I, mean, I know, like, uh, Rainbow Six Siege did it last year. They they came out and was like, oh, yeah, all the maps are free, all the characters are free, you can unlock them. Like, they might take a bit longer than to unlock mm-hmm. than it would be if you bought the season pass, but, you know, they're free. Like, you can you can grind that game and unlock everything that you would if you had the season pass. So, yeah, I think it's definitely a practice that a lot more people should start jumping into because why not? it makes why not? me more wonder game. if, because Titanfall 1... The player base dropped after like a month or so. So right. I wonder if they were anticipating that for Titanfall 2. Because the last thing you want when you've got a lower player base is have it split in half with people that have got the new maps and the people that don't. So I wonder That's if this point. is them saying, well, we don't want that to happen again. So we're just going to keep it all free and like keep the player base all in the same like lobby or whatever. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Why not? I mean, yeah, you're right. I think it would completely split the player base, and yeah, it's a good move. But if, yeah, that is like the reason they've done it. It would be good to see more games that know they might not be as successful keeping their DLC free. Like you got Battlefield right. One, where it's like, you know, there's got to be people playing this game for another year. We can have people playing <laughs> yeah. on DLC maps and non DLC maps. So maybe other games that aren't as like high profile as those, they should be looking at well maybe we shouldn't charge for DLC maybe we should keep the player base all on the same on the same product or whatever so yeah I was pleasantly surprised you don't often see free DLC and free game so yeah nice I've only got two so <laughs> those were my no, that's that's more than enough how about you Evan have you got anything pleasant surprises um well any surprises it doesn't have to be pleasant I guess I said but... <laughs> And so this is not necessarily just surprises because I think there's a lot of surprises in 2016 for better or for worse. I guess it depends on what said surprise yeah, is. Perspective, yeah. 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 But one thing I was surprised at that wasn't intended to be what it was, and I'm kind of twisting the words of Dyson here in terms of what we're talking about, is the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise uh, 25th anniversary <laughs> live stream. Really? <laughs> so basically with a lot of series have been coming up on like their 20th, 25th, 30th anniversaries. You have like within five years of each other, it's like Mega Man and Zelda and Mario. Yeah, Tomb Raider just had his 20th. Yeah, yeah and then uh, Resident Evil as well. Um, but I guess mm-hmm. there was a surprise there, but... Um, yeah, Sonic was on its 25th anniversary, and then to kick that off was the weirdest live stream slash party. I think it was held in some location in L.A. 
that I've ever seen. I mean, just type in Sonic the Hedgehog 25th Anniversary Party and you'll just get oh, videos about... You know I've seen it. Oh, of course you have. Disastrous, shit show, unbelievable, jaw-dropping, <laughs> like, insert hyperbole, you know, headline See here. that guy that grabs that mic and starts singing that song? Oh, yeah. That would totally be me. <laughs> we, we actually spoke about that on the podcast uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, actually. Do you remember? It was on one of the intros, I think. Yeah. I it's, um... It was just... <laughs> it's great. It was just one of those things for me, like... Number one, I just... Because a lot of people haven't been doing a lot with their anniversaries, not that they necessarily need to. There's nothing dictating that they, they have to release a game. I mean, you can't ask someone to make a game just because it's the 20th anniversary. You know what I mean? But... Right. Uh, so... The fact that it was Sonic's 25th anniversary and that's like, oh, they're going to have this uh, this massive, if you could call it massive, whatever, this, this uh, live stream. Something. They're, they're going to hold yeah. an actual event that people came to and they had a concert there and they were going to show some, uh, some new games and stuff. And uh, my God, it was, um, it's entertaining, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, it, it's uh yeah it's bad. So I think um a couple of people have put up uh cuts. They they they've put together the best of. So you don't have to watch the whole thing for yourself. You can just watch the highlights. <laughs> the best of the worst. The best yeah. of the worst. It is definitely the best of the worst. I was I was surprised. It's not like a highlight of 2016, but it kind of is because I had a great time <laughs> watching several parts of those super cuts over and over and over again, especially the uh Sonic Heroes um live cover with the uh, audience member taking the reins. The hand of God file. Yep, yeah. or the uh, taking the microphone from uh, was the, a, the singer and uh, singing along, yeah. It was kind of a new low for Sonic fans. <laughs> which, which is like, okay, so that's what's surprising about it. Like, you think it can't when get any lower. it was rock bottom, yeah. yeah. it wasn't bottom enough. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's like, you, how can it get any worse? And yet it can. That's how. But then, you know, then <laughs> whatever, like Sonic Mania comes out of that, and then that looks pretty awesome. So we will see what happens with that. But uh, Vin, how about yourself? What, uh, what has been the biggest surprise or biggest surprises of 2016 so far that weren't necessarily intended as surprises? Right, yeah. Yeah, I had, I had a couple, but I'm going to forfeit one of them. Uh, the first, the one that I'm going to forfeit really is the, uh, the Sony press conference this year because it was weird and different but surprisingly good like the fact that they only had like three people on stage throughout the whole conference Kojima being one of them as well and they had like a live orchestra and it was just game after game after game that was a nice surprise that's a good one man yeah because like normally with when we watch e3 conferences it's just like the whole spiel like oh here are the pie charts this is how well we did last year it's like oh fuck off i'm, you know? I'm glad so, like, we just do not that, care by the way yeah and so this year when they came out on stage and they just was just like all right his his the last guardian his you know this is just game after game after game like his god of war and his uh days gone and stuff it was just it was awesome man it was really it was really nice as well because that's really all we watch the conferences for like to be honest we don't we don't care about any of the other stuff we don't care about we know that you have you know these people there like your investors and your boardroom meeting people are all sat in the crowd like hmm, how, how are their projections this year i know they care about that stuff but we don't and the majority of people are watching it don't care so it was nice surprise to see sony actually react to that and do it properly but the main one which i actually wanted to talk about was uh well not really talk about but to mention was uh, battlefield one actually considering we just spoke about it uh, not so much like the release of the game and stuff, but just the announcement of it. The whole, the whole thing with uh, the Call of Duty trailer doing so terrible at the same time as the Battlefield One trailer doing so well. Mm -hmm. The fact that Battlefield One is returning back to like historical shooter rather than you know another space shooter and stuff, and it's uh, it's ironic and funny, and it sort of put the whole industry in perspective for me this year because I remember going back five six years ago we were all complaining about how boring and tedious like world war ii shooters were and um we were sick of firing these old weapons and stuff and we wanted like futuristic stuff and now we're we're on the flip end of that where it's just like all right we're getting sick of these space shooters now and we want to we want to go back to world war one so it was nice to it was nice to actually see someone react to that because i actually way prefer i prefer all the 
the historical shooters anyway. So it was it was nice to see them actually make the dive because when when the rumors were coming out that EA and Dice were going to be doing a World War One shooter, everyone was like, "Yeah, I don't I don't think I really believe that. There's not really much there. It's like it's a bunch of trenches, you know. I don't I don't really see a game coming out of World War Two, World War One sort of thing." But fuck, they they proved us wrong, man. They they really did. That announcement trailer was a huge surprise to me. That probably the biggest surprise of this year. I think uh, so, actually, Vin, um, yeah. on this very podcast, FSB Alston was the one that told you for the first time that there was a rumor that they were bringing the series back yeah, to World I War One, and I remember how excited remember and surprised you were at that point. Yeah, it's just the idea of having a bolt action rifle in a video game again. You know, <laughs> like, like as many times as no I talk idea. about bonk, you talk about this bolt action rifle. I know how much <laughs> do, it man. means I to do. you it, at this point. And it's hilarious because, like in Battlefield One, because I've been trained like over the years of playing all these World War Two shooters, I've been trained with like bolt action iron sight rifles. In Battlefield One, if you aim down scope with a sniper rifle with a scope on top, it's like a glint, so people can see you from a mile away, pretty much like aiming down sight. So, but if you're having iron sights, you can, you've got the exact same gun, but you're not telling everyone where you are. So I'm just absolutely destroying snipers because they've all been playing Call of Duty or whatever for the past like 10 years or something. And they just don't know where I'm coming from half the time because I'm just, I'm firing across the map because I've got a nice big TV or whatever and I can see them. I just see the specs in the distance and I just line them up with my iron sights. They don't know how, how the hell to react to it. So it's great. Like I, I'm having a boatload of fun with it and they're obviously probably going to catch up eventually and start shooting back with iron sights. Like, all right, yeah, this this dude's got the right idea. But yeah, oh, ball action rifles, man. I love them. They're great. We need more video games with them. It makes some pretty interesting gameplay the bolt action rifle like I played Battlefield 1 and then I played Titanfall 2 and then just killing someone halfway across the map with a semi automatic rifle in like half a second I was like man this is so boring and that's what even though I'm having a bad time with Battlefield 1 just now I still think it's way better like you're really thinking about your shots your iron sight doesn't have an exact precise dot it's that's an so- interesting perspective like you appreciate a game that you have criticized a lot yeah i mean even even like the shots that you fire in battlefield one if if you fire a bullet it doesn't land exactly where you're aiming a lot of the time like they have this weird algorithm where it actually it's not perfect every time does it have like a curve on so it or something yeah no it's got like chance shots as well so hmm. if you fire like multiple shots at this the exact same location it's it, the chances are they're actually going to not hit the exact same spot every time so it adds like more realism to it because the world war one weapons were so shit basically like they were all <laughs> right, yeah. they were all just made up on the spot like they right from from they were, now right? they were from, making up as yeah. yeah so they were just making up as they were going along so like every bullet like lands in a different spot so there's like sort of look attached to each weapon as well and it feels good as well when you land a, a shot from across the map with a, an iron sight rifle it's just it's it's next level of victory compared to like Dyson was saying with like a submachine gun across the map. It's it's a completely different feeling. So, yeah. No, that was Sweet. a cool surprise for them to go back to yeah. World War One. Yeah, and it's been it's been largely pleasant. I've I've enjoyed it so far, and I, I like shooting people back in. Well, especially after Battlefield Four. I mean, Jesus Christ! I mean, I've never played that the was, game, and I've heard the stories time and time again. So, definitely a surprise, yep. I'm sure. Pleasant surprise. Indeed. Pleasant surprise. Pleasant, yep. indeed. Cool. So, yeah, we should uh, move on to our next subject. Uh, and the next topic, which I actually wanted to talk about, was this whole uh, Bethesda review thing which has been going around. And not so much the Bethesda thing itself, but the, the sort of conversation which has come out of that, which is about how publishers treat gamers and how reviews are treated and, you know, this this weird sort of ecology that we've got around them now. But the first... The first question which I wanted to sort of pose to you guys was, do you actually read or watch reviews anymore? Because I know a lot of people that don't. Like, they'll they'll watch Let's Plays, they'll they'll watch, they'll listen to podcasts and stuff like that. And I'm not even sure if a lot of people read reviews anymore, sort of thing, you know, like the written word. So I was I wanted to get your take on that. Uh, Dyson, like, do you actually read reviews or do you just listen to them and stuff? I don't read any at all whatsoever right. um, the only reviews I do watch 
emphasis on the watch because I can't be bothered reading. Uh, I watched I watched <laughs> right. the Easy Allies reviews, but not to know whether I want to buy them. Mm-hmm. Like I've already made my decision just on my own accord. But I'll watch the review just to like see what they thought, or you know, just out of interest. Like that's the only time I really watch reviews. Like, oh, I wonder what Easy Allies for. I wonder what. But even though what they think doesn't affect my decision like I've already made my decision yeah so even though I do read or watch a few of them it's not for the reasons that might normally be right but like say if you had a game in mind that you wanted to buy and you were like yeah I'm gonna I'm probably gonna buy this game this week or something then you go and check out the Easy Allies video and they're just like, it's fucking awful. It's the worst thing ever. Don't even look at this thing in the in the right direction sort of thing. Would that change your mind at all? Or would you still probably go out and buy it? the thing about reviews. Even though like, I don't watch them, I kind of like, it's not a, one particular review. It's like the general reviews. So like, say Mafia 3, just generally every person's reviewing it with a low score. So even though right. I haven't read it, so you get a feel and I it. get the service. I still need that service to say everyone's saying it's shit. I'm not going to bother. Yeah. So like the That's review system as a whole, you know, I, I still would want it to be here, even though I'm not actually reading or watching them. I just need like the general sense of how the game is across yeah, all of them. I think you're right about that. I mean, like, there's you know, people use the word zeitgeist quite a lot but i think the general game and zeitgeist sort of they're like everyone there's like this feeling of if a game is good or bad even though if no one actually says if it's good or bad you sort of get the the overall impression of it yeah. just from everyone as a collective like game. you'll go and sifted you'll see the same game review 10 times you read a little like description underneath and every single one be like you know this, there'll be a game where every single one's pointed out this game is bad because of this so yeah Right. Or they all say it's great and like, okay. That game I was thinking about getting every reviewer said, Yep, 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 yep. So I'll I'll give it a go. Fair play. How about you, Evan? Do you still read reviews or watch them or what? Um, I think I while I do read Sifted's reviews and I do read some reviews because um in terms of just like learning how to write a bit, which I do every now and then, I think I've tried to start writing more since I've been unsifted, but I wouldn't call yeah. myself a write, writer in any stretch of the imagination because I've never learned how to write and I don't think I'm any good at it. But in terms of learning how to write, I do read some, or I'd say, to be honest with myself, I kind of scan over lots of reviews. But right. I would say like within the past couple of years, probably since I became a fan of game trailers uh, years and years ago, like I've totally switched over to video reviews because... I think I feel like I can absorb just as much information from uh, a video review in terms of how, uh, from what I can get from the review about a certain game. I can get as much information from that, necessary information, as from a written review. And I can actually listen to the review while I do other things. Because I think... I think in the terms of, like game trailers i think they actually when they do their written review their written review is the exact same as their video review they just put footage over the top of it sort of thing right so someone writes it goes on to, well it used to go onto the site of game trailers but then the actual video is just like a trans well it's the trans the actual written review is just the transcript of the video i think ign do the same thing actually so okay yeah yeah and uh i think part of that is just because just the proliferation of uh technology and my my phone and my computer and stuff like i am com- incredibly obsessed with multitasking now where i feel like if i'm doing one single thing i'm wasting my time for right. example if i'm playing a video game for three hours and listening to the soundtrack and the music and the sound effects and that i'm wasting time uh not listening to three hours of a podcast whereas <laughs> yeah, if i, I listen to a podcast for, podcast for three hours and then play a video game for three hours I've saved that amount of time because I'm doing both at the same time. So while I'm playing video games, I listen to video reviews all the time. Um, So yeah, I've completely been converted to a certain extent. Uh, I do scan over written reviews, but I will be honest with myself and say like from front, 
from first sentence to last sentence, I have not list like read a full review in in quite some time. Yeah, I mean a lot of uh, written reviews which I read. Uh, well, depending like if if it's someone that I trust, then I'll read the whole review. But majority of the time, if it's someone that I don't know and I just want to get their feeling for it, I'll just go down to the last paragraph. Yeah, and I've done that before as well. Basically, like you know, in their their outro or whatever, it's so like they they point out all the stuff which is good and all the stuff that's bad, and if they liked it or if, like the value of it, sort of thing. And and the thing but, is, like, there's it's nothing against the writing. Like, I kind of oh no no, did, no. it's just time. Yeah right? yeah, like I don't like the idea of of the written review going away. And I think what you were saying, Vin, I think if if they were, I don't care how long the video is, I'm gonna watch it or listen to it. But I know. YouTube probably says otherwise in terms of like how many people are going to watch from start to finish. But if they the, mm-hmm. were to write a review and then just transcript that and, and add a voiceover to that, I would listen to the entire thing. I think right. I would. It's just the fact that I don't want to spend my time doing one single thing. Whereas if I'd listen to yeah. a 10 minute review and play a video game. Yeah, I used to. Um, well, I still do it actually because at work, if I'm if I'm really busy and if a review has come out and there's no video reviews for it or anything yet. I'll basically copy and paste the written review into Google Translate. And not actually translate or anything, but then it's got like the what's called like dictation. Are you on serious? There. So it'll just basically wow. Yeah, yeah. And well, it'll I've just, never it'll just read the that. review to me. Yeah, that's I do that all the time. Yeah, well yeah. that's the thing. So, like you can do two things at once while you do that. So Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, for anyone listening, if you're if you're not into written reviews and you just like listening to them, do that. Like throw it into Google Translate and just turn on their dictation and it'll sit it'll give you the whole review is that's a that's so, a really good idea i actually might try that tune in yeah, next time for in vin's time. top tips <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah i do that a lot but uh yeah moving on basically i wanted to sort of grasp like what you guys think about this whole publishers trying to like op- over promote games and like over promote like you should pre-order the game now and then only let review copies go out like after the games come out. I mean, there's a lot of gamers out there which are sort of like angry about this and like um, not Nintendo. Uh, Bethesda have just recently stated their new practices and said we're, we're only going to release games when. Well, the reviews are only going to go out when the game's ready. So, but thing. then, so but then they pedal the back game. and give it to fucking influ- influencers on YouTube. So, it, so it's total bullshit. So. Like yeah, say you bullshit. say one thing and then do another, you you immediately lost my respect for whatever PR fluff you were trying to put forth, whether or not it was genuine or not, which it wasn't. So like, yeah, I no, I think that's fucking bullshit, and it I'm disappointed. It's not like Bethesda's my friend, but I like the games that they make, especially like Dishonored Two that's coming out, which is part of this whole conversation. I fucking love Dishonored. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And uh, I just I just don't like how disingenuous this type of thing is. And um, what what whether or not I think or for what for whatever I think about like journalists and and the review system and and gaming websites and stuff like that. Like the I, the whole idea is the the publisher is trying to control how much positive um, information is out there about their game. Um, and I get why they're doing that because they're a business, but. I don't. I think it's. I think it's fucking shit. It's. It's bad. I think it's bad that they're just trying to control. They're trying to put their game in the best light as possible, which I get wh- why they're doing it. But they're doing it in such a way where it's almost deceptive in terms of. They're. They're just trying to control. They're trying to lock down the information available for their game to put it in the most positive light. And that's bad for games that need to be looked at more critically or that you know people would actually view as a crappy game and it's not it's not right i don't think it's right at all you you send your product out there to be reviewed and if it's a good product it will be reviewed well uh generally you know it'll have whatever like a metacritic score it should generally be reviewed well if not it won't so yeah i you know I, i don't like it at all that is the good thing about Metacritic, at least. I have to give them credit for that. Like, they'll only take into account the, like, registered publication outlets or whatever, you know? They won't They won't just let, like, any random YouTuber sort of sign up and just start hammering the game, saying, oh, it's, it's 10 out of 10, when everyone else is saying it's 4 out of 10. That's, that is one of the good things. So I give them credit for that. But, yeah, and, I mean, 
Yeah. I agree. I mean, they they shouldn't be able to control the message in the respect of YouTube sort of thing. But like, how do how do you feel specifically like about publications in general where they hold back a review copy until day of release? Like, do you have any problems with that? Um. It- well, it just depends because I'm not someone to buy a game day one. Um, I always look at reviews. And okay. not only that, I look at a lot of reviews. And I don't even really necessarily have anyone that, like, I align. Like, I, okay, let's just say there's a reviewer at, at a website or a YouTuber. doesn't matter who it is. And mm-hmm. I say, okay, judging from this person's past, my kind of likes and dislikes in terms of gaming kind of are very similar to theirs. So I'm going to look to them. Yeah. So like if they like said game, I'll probably like it. I've never been like that because everyone is different. And so I've always watched and read sometimes lots of reviews and then made a general consensus as to whether or not I feel like this is the game for me. Um, so, and like, for example, like giant bomb, I highly respect Jeff Gersman. Like he's been in the industry for forever. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, he's a legend, but like he plays like shooters and fighting games and driving games and stuff. I dislike all of those things, but I respect him as a reviewer. But when he rates a game, like he, he gave Titanfall two five out of five stars. Now I respect that guy as, as a person starting his own company, giant bomb, blah, 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 whatever in terms of reviewer, of course, but I don't like Titanfall 2. I know I'm not going to like that game. So I, I'm i pretty... Like, I know what I like. And I just think, regardless of all this stuff, like, you read all of the reviews and you take into account your own likes and stuff and you, you judge from there. But, um, yeah, it's just... Some of this stuff is just a little... Like, I, I for people that aren't like that, I just worry that... They're gonna lock like a thirteen year old locking onto their favorite U- YouTuber or whatever. Like, I, like right. I don't even know. Like, I'm so far away from that type of stuff. I don't even know what's going on in that. In in that, like there there are YouTube videos about unpacking your groceries. <laughs> How like, to fry I, an egg one one. Yeah, like I'm fucking out. Like I'm like, I am yeah. I'm I'm thirty one. I'm at the point where like I don't know what's going on in terms of younger <laughs> gamers. If that's a thing. Oh, they're kids these days. Yeah, yeah. So like like I don't know. Like I don't know, Vin. Like how do you feel about it? No, I know what you mean. I mean, where you're saying that, yeah, it sucks that they're holding back the copies of for reviewers, you know, so like proper outlets, so Polygon, you know, IGN, you know, these d- big outlets like Giant Bomb and stuff. If they're holding back the review copies from them and then only giving it to the influencers to say good things about the game, that sucks. That's fucked up. I do not agree with that whatsoever, 100%. But what I don't, really get is like the uproar of people where if a game hasn't been released to absolutely anyone if it's been held back to day one so the game's out today and reviewers have only just got that game on that day you know i don't i don't see necessarily the huge uproar about that specifically giving it to influencers before the review that sucks that should never happen that's that's wrong because you are corrupting the message as it were like you're twisting it so gamers are getting the wrong idea for it sort of thing with all these reviewers like skyrim remaster right now I, no one's done a review on it and like no one's doing comparisons or anything yet but if you go onto youtube there's all these people doing let's plays of them and i mean skyrim isn't so bad because it's a remaster or whatever but what happens when dishonored 2 comes out you know like what happens when only the influencers get that first right. that sucks and that i think something that should be said for let's plays is a lot of people that watch let's plays are not the people that are going to be buying the game exactly yeah so but the the thing which I don't get is the uproar about people where they're saying, you know, they're, they're over-promoting the game and they're trying to say, you know, this game's amazing, you know, look at all these cool pre-orders and stuff. And then they don't release the reviews until the day of that it's out. So a load of people go out uh, hyped up about the game, they'll buy it day one, and then <laughs> it's a terrible game. I don't, I, mean, know who that, those pe- I don't know who those people are. That's what I mean. We say that, but look at No Man's Sky. Sure. No Man's Sky is a great example. I mean, everyone, every single reviewer in the world, like I don't know many reviewers that gave that game a high score. Like they all said it's terrible. It's got a load of problems. There's a lot of stuff that needs fixing. Yet it sold loads because a load of people got hyped on the game when I bought it day one. And I mean, is that the fault of the publisher, do you think, Dyson? Or is that like, do you blame 
the, the gamer to a certain respect you know like did like you should wait people for people going in buying it day one have to be children <laughs> like i kind of know where they're coming from when i if i if i assume that everyone's <coughs> younger like when halo 2 came out or whatever and i was like a kid there was no way I was waiting more than one day extra to play that game. I was buying it. I lied to my mom. Mom, I want this game. I want this game on this day. If I wait one more day, I'm going to be the biggest loser in the whole world not playing Halo 2 on day one. <laughs> right. I, I get that. And that's why I think it must be a younger audience that buy these things day one. Like, Which makes it worse because those are the kids that are watching those influencers on YouTube. Yeah, I would think. The best example <clears throat> is like kids can't wait to open a present on christmas day they got like no i want it now i'm gonna open secretly open the packaging and play the game or they put it back in the packaging they put it under the tree like it just seems to boil down to can you wait seven days like you just gotta wait yeah, it's not it's just, sometimes. seems like such a simple solution I mean, and that's exactly what I do. That's the thing that confuses me more than anything. Like when a game comes out and and the review copies haven't been released yet, or there's an embargo or whatever, I just wait. Like even like there's a reason why I don't own Mafia Three right now. There's a reason why I don't own No Man's Sky. It's because I waited. Like yeah. I literally waited three days. The reviews came out. It's like it's terrible. Don't go near it. I'm and like, man, right, cool. I thought I thought mafia 3 was going to be some sort of slam dunk i, I truly did i i thought it was going to be awesome i thought like, it was going to be amazing it and i was like man that looks great i can't wait to see the reviews on that that's that was my reaction to seeing and that, that is why you do rate for reviews those i mean two recent examples right no man's yeah. sky and mafia 3 that is why you you wait to see what you know what the consensus is in terms of uh, the people that got the game early yeah, and it's it's tough. I mean, it's really tough. So when I see all these people out saying, oh, you know, they're just trying to manipulate people to go out and buy the game day one. I mean, I, I don't really see that as the publisher's fault. Like, they're a business at the end of the day. They've got to sell their product. And the main people that are complaining about this are the people that have been burnt day one gamers and outlets. Like, outlets are complaining about it because obviously they don't want to have to rush their reviews or whatever. And I feel bad for them. I really do. Like, I'm not, but, I'm not disputing but, but, but that. Say, but saying but, that, like, I get... Because they're talking about, we're talking about the average consumer. Like, we want it now. Like, this game is released now. What is what's going on? What is the review? YouTubers already have the reviews out. If these sites don't have it out, guess what? Fuck you. I'm I'm watching this stuff and I'm gonna make my decision now. And when your review comes out, I'm not gonna read it. Yeah. I already bought the game or I didn't. So like, exactly. tough tough luck, buddy. You're like you're too slow. But for me, and that's that sucks. But for me, it's like I can wait. I'll wait right. a week. I'll wait a week to see how this all pans out. And then I'll make my decision. But unfortunately, a lot of people are not like that. And I understand why these journalists and these websites are scrambling and, and making a fuss over this whole deal. And it is yeah. unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, like the only time I ever buy games day one, really, uh, if it's a developer which I trust, and that's it. And even if, if I get burnt even once, it's like right now, Bethesda, like I trusted them to the end of the earth. And then when I saw Fallout 4, when I played it, I really enjoyed Fallout 4, but there was a lot of problems with it, and I wish I knew about it before I jumped in day one sort of thing. In retrospect, I probably would have waited for a sale. So now, whenever the next Elder Scroll game gets announced, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for a review. Well, like, Which I makes just, sense. I mean, lesson learned, yeah. right? You are a, you can wait now. You're not... Exactly. I think, yeah, I think with like age, you just develop your own like buying habits. I, I like by now I know all the publishers I know who to buy from straight away who not to who to wait who to wait for a sale you just kind of I don't know I don't, I don't really get burned because I've just developed this method of buying games to a point well, where yeah, I mean, it all works yeah yeah I mean I don't get burned because I buy games like six years after they come out so, yeah. so that's, that's <laughs> right. Every, everything that could be written about the game has already been it's already been re- yeah, man, you have this, to re-review it so it's a bit this, dated there's <laughs> games where I don't mind being burned like I was saying on Sifted like the new Mass Effect I'm buying that game no matter how shit it is because it's Mass Effect like even if yeah, that, that I, is there's an like interesting a 30 second cutscene yeah. with a cool bit of story in it that's enough like, I love it that <laughs> much right I kind of feel the same way about The Last Guardian you know it's the same thing yeah, actually like, Vin I was, I was going to ask you like having said all what you said are you going yeah. to buy Last Guardian the day of? Yeah, 
exactly definitely yeah. because i'm because go- i trust that developer that's the thing like and all the complaints which i've heard from the people that have played stuff at the betas and stuff the main the only one complaint which i've really heard thus far is the camera and sure. if it's the exact same camera system as what they've got in eco and shadow colossus oh man i am totally cool with that man oh man thousand yeah. percent whatever well, but, but i think like, you're you're cares? in the same mindset as as me as like look like there is that game that i will buy day one but that's one in like 50 games type of deal. exactly yeah yeah if it's if it's like another it's mafia 3 is like the best example it's the game i, I was great. so disappointed yeah yeah but it wasn't really a publisher which i completely trusted so i waited to watch the reviews and then it came out and it was a big disappointment which sucks but i'm glad that i waited otherwise i'd be sat here with this crappy game for 60 dollars, which i can't trade in because i'm all digital as well so i'm extra car- cautious you know so yeah i think like the the consensus which we sort of come down to is just fucking wait for reviews people that's it you know like the only time that it really really sucks is when publishers are releasing it to influencers first that should be illegal in my opinion like that should not be allowed if you're because it's false advertisement more than anything I'd, i'd probably put that down to is like you're trying to boost up the game to tell other people like hey everyone say this game is great and then not release it to people to review properly. I mean, it's it's not really fair. So, yeah. Have you guys got anything to add to it? Um, I guess it comes down to if people even, like, yeah, they're going to give it to these privileged YouTubers, but are those people watching even going to buy that game based on their opinion? Like, I have people at work about, I've got about three people at work who all own a PlayStation and they all bought Mafia, but they all bought it like two weeks after the reviews came out saying it was shit. Like they literally just saw an advert on TV <laughs> right. or they're like looking for the newspaper and oh, that Mafia 3 looks good. And then they see it on TV and they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to go get it. And because they're console owners and they're not all digital, if the game sucks, they're just like, well, I'll just trade it in and get like, you know, 80% of the game back. I'll get another game. They don't, because they're not all digital, they don't actually feel... Like, when a game's disappointing, they don't go, man, why did I spend all that money? They're just like, oh, just treat it in the next day and get Battlefield 1. And, yeah, like, that's a good point, actually. They just really keep going in their own, their own way, so to speak. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's fucking depressing. And, like, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, more prolific YouTubers that have done terrible things in the past, recently with, like, CSGO on that, which is not necessarily mm-hmm. reviewing, but they got a bit of, like, public shaming and a slap on the wrist, but like they're just back at it and that's it yeah so like that type of stuff where like even if you get a bit of a slap on the wrist in terms of whatever i don't know what's going on with publishers and companies and youtubers and whatever but it's a bit i I don't like the idea of putting reviews in the hands of influencers and youtubers and stuff to a whole because Mm -hmm. like yeah those people probably came from fucking zero and uh, they made their name, and uh, they they didn't fucking go to school, and they didn't. Bec- they're not journalists, and they didn't take classes on ethics and, and morals and stuff. They're just fucking YouTubers, and yeah, well, it's, it's like you said, they're not they're not critical thinkers, you know. Yeah. They don't. They're just following the money trail, basically, and everyone knows it. And I think gamers are savvy to that to an extent as well. So that uh, there is something to be said for that, you know, like if. A YouTuber is saying something's great versus Polygon saying something great. Even though, like, I don't read or watch either of those things properly to, like, a massive extent. Like, I know I should probably listen to Polygon more than the YouTuber. It's just a natural instinct now that I think everyone's sort of developed. And so, yeah, buyers beware sort of thing. And if if Bethesda do carry this shit on, and, and seriously, like, if Dishonored 2 gets released to YouTube influencers first before reviewers, that that that's dodgy as fuck like that's really really shady and that shouldn't be happening but as in terms of you know day one reviews or whatever don't whatever just wait people just have a little patience don't pre-order games just wait just be be smart gamers are smart i i found and, and the most part so just use your common sense and just yeah. just wait the extra few days like yeah, the I game's think, not going anywhere yeah, yeah. i yeah. think the reason everyone's getting caught up about this is because it's you know just professor today if this is like the next trend it's that's why it's such a big deal it's like if this is like the next dlc or microtransactions and this just becomes the norm and then that is 
a problem when yeah. it's just Bethesda. I'm just like, whatever, guys. It's just I don't even play Skyrim. I don't give a fuck. But, right. But if every game was to follow that trend, then then that would be a really big problem. If every game was given to YouTubers first, and you had to wait mm-hmm. weeks, it would get. It's a pretty big problem, I think. More than a problem. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I mean, I hope other publishers don't jump on board with it either, so... Yeah, fingers oh, crossed. But you kind of want this to backfire big time. Oh, it yeah. will. I mean, it is. I mean, the fact that we're talking about it right now, that is backfiring, so... Right. Yeah, we will see in the coming months, I'm sure. Uh, hopefully, Skyrim is great, regardless of the influencers and all that sort of stuff. I'm, I'm looking forward to jumping back into that world once it drops down in price because I'm not paying $60 for a five-year-old game. <laughs> Kiss my ass, Bethesda. But yeah, moving on. Uh, coming up to the end of the podcast, actually. We are probably going to skip Evan's wish list because we've gone over a little bit. Today. Yeah, we have. Uh, that's all right. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of games out there. We can always hold it till next time. Indeed. And um, we're also going to skip content call-outs because again, yeah. we've gone over. But it's all good. Uh, just want to give our final thoughts and goodbyes. Just wanted to say a massive thank you to Dyson XP for joining us again man thank you very much no worries to uh, having me on again no worries so have you got any uh, final goodbyes and a Twitter handle that you've got that you can spread around to people and any other plugs that you've got I don't know if you do any let's plays or anything so feel free to fire anything out that you've got man I'm just gonna say nope nope and nope and I'll see you on another time <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that that's great yeah I mean it's honest you know like you can obviously find Dyson XP on Sifted we're always on there you're one of the more active members as well like you're always on the uh, Twitch stream as well for Game Face right yeah you yeah. fucking achievement hunter trying to beat me out <laughs> I'll not have it hey, I, man, think, I've, I think I've, I've had a couple more again. recently I did, but I haven't updated that thread for a long time, so we'll see what yeah, happens. Yeah, uh, because you'll find that I'll get on it back at the top again. <laughs> oh, oh shit! All right, let me count. <laughs> let me count your achievements after this episode finishes. Sweet. Uh, how about you, Evan? What is your Twitter handle and any goodbyes? If you, uh, you can catch me at the stand user at sifted.net, giant bomb, and Twitter. Twitter. Um, <laughs> Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, as Vin said last episode, like fall's coming around in Japan, and it's uh, absolutely beautiful in the fall. Oh yeah. Or autumn, as uh, people in uh, other places. The say. motherland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the correct version of fall, as uh, my friend would say, but uh, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, like Amen. Japan is very beautiful. Beautiful in the autumn slash fall. I actually do prefer autumn, to be honest. It's it's a much prettier word to. Uh, describe the, the the season but uh take a lot of pictures of japan in the fall <laughs> i just went back to the fucking word anyways <laughs> i take i take a lot of pictures in the fall of japan it's very very beautiful as the, as the leaves change so yeah if you want to follow me on twitter I, I at the stand user yeah i take a lot of pictures in the fall and uh vin how about yourself Sweet. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter uh, uh, at Vin Hill Art. You can find me and some of my finger paintings on there from time to time. Again, like Evan said, uh, autumn or fall is my very time of year as well. So I'll probably be taking a lot of pictures as well. So I think I'm actually going to Nara next weekend. So that'd be pretty. Lovely. Uh, yeah. So yeah, thanks a lot, guys, for joining us. And if you do want to come onto the podcast, please make sure that you message either me or Evan. Our, our guest list is actually really thinning out recently. So we need... We need guests, so please message us, and we will get you on the show as soon as possible. Basically, like, so me being on means they're at the bottom of the bow. So basically, get your which, which is actually not a long list in and of itself. <laughs> so <laughs> you're going to be on in like fucking two weeks. So whatever. Uh, it's all good, but yeah, if you do want to be on the show, make sure you message us uh, either on Sifted or you can actually find us on Twitter as well. You can message us on there or uh, send us a. A tweet as it were and let us know that you want to be on the show you can find us at uh, podcast underscore reload and we will hook you up basically we'll we'll get you on the show as soon as possible to talk about the games industry and all those weird ways as always so from us guys thank you very much for listening and we will catch you guys later so ta-ta see ya better reload your guns cause podcast next week <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was that? <laughs> I don't know. I tried I tried something new. Didn't quite work. <laughs>
No, no, that was that. It worked. It worked <laughs> beautifully. Perfect. Oh, oh Jesus please, Christ! Please never stop doing that. That'd be oh, great. We'll try. <laughs>